Raiders, welcome to the Friday Raid Digest and welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. We have some upcoming changes to the Siege Mode and some uh, surprise summoning event for this weekend, guys. We're going to walk you through everything that you need to know. So let me just start with the summoning event first. On the 21st of August, Ukraine is celebrating the Independence Day. So because we have Marichka and Taras in the game that kind of like symbolizes the Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian power... We're going to have a 15x progressive chance for these two champions. Now, keep that in mind as well, guys. We have other champions, other events coming in the next few weeks. So you might not want to dump all of your shards on a 15x progressive chance unless you're really close to the mercy and you want to risk it for that chocolate biscuit. Hey, folks, this Saturday, August 24th, to celebrate the Independence Day of Ukraine, we're launching a special progressive chance event giving you at least a 15x chance to summon Taras the Fierce and Marichka the Unbreakable from Void Shards. The event will last for exactly 24 hours. No more, no less. So tomorrow, Sunday morning is going to be over, guys. They are still very strong champions, uh, very powerful for Arena. Uh, regardless if we're talking about Live Arena or Classic Arena, sorry, Tag Team Arena, Taras is very powerful for Hydra Clan boss, deals a lot of damage. They are very powerful in pretty much all of the content, to be honest. There isn't uh, any specific content where they're not powerful. They destroy the clan boss, they destroy dungeons, not speedruns or anything like that, but they're very, very powerful uh, as, uh, as champions, you know? So you might be tempted to go for them, you might not. Keep in mind, Odin, Odin is just kind of like uh, waiting there in the background to, uh, to drop out, okay? We're going to have a champion chase tournament for him. We're going to have the deck of fate for Freya, guys. We're going to have the Tor fusion coming as well, which, by the way, we have no idea if that champion is going to be good or no. But it's still uh, better to prepare. 15x uh, events are not good unless you're a whale and you're, you have tons of shards and you're really trying to uh, uh, get that champion. That's the one that you're, uh, you're chasing, you know? And if you're a Kraken, this... These things that I just named right here won't be an issue for you. But for the rest of you guys out there, if you're very close to the Mercy and you think 10, 20 shards will get you a Legendary, uh, I would try it, you know, personally. But it's still a very low chance to get a champion that uh, is on the 15x. I just want you guys to be aware of it and keep it in, uh, in mind, you know. Now, when we are talking about the Siege and uh, we're going to get to the fri uh, Friday Raid Digest in a second, I mentioned before, if you level up your Stronghold, guys, basically what's going to happen, the opponents will gain one extra attack, one extra retry. A lot of you guys were like, Scratch, how do you know that? Who confirmed it? Because they're not mentioning it in here. Well, that was confirmed by Plarium. Probably a lot of you guys uh, saw in the second siege, if the opponents managed to upgrade their building, uh, you saw exactly what happened. Or if the opponent did not, uh, if you did not manage to uh, level up your building, maybe the opponent did, and... Uh, you saw that you had extra attacks. So that's an issue. Because we have way more attacks than we need to. To defeat these buildings. Which means that it doesn't matter. How bad your opponent will be. They will definitely get close to destroy some of your buildings. And uh, to repair them is extremely, extremely costly. So if we're going to head over right here. Let's start with the very first thing. Asgard Divide is in full swing. And we hope that your encounters with the mighty Odin Father Have brought you some victories. We also hope uh, you enjoyed participating in some of our um, Asgard team contests to compete for Odin's avatar and other prizes. So they are hosting all sorts of events, guys. Feel free to check this link out if you want to. Uh, even if you are not of a competitive nature, we do encourage you to check out uh, other raids, uh, raiders' entries. Without further ado, let's move into the siege. And there are some crazy things happening. It's actually a massive, massive nerf to all of those one, two seconds. Uh, speed farm teams that we have in the game we've noticed some issues with the way the siege functions and uh, are planning several measures to make this game mode more balanced and exciting to play for instance we plan to add a tiebreaker solution if both clans have their bastions destroyed and end up with an equal number of victory medals which will result in a draw and nobody get the, uh, nobody will get the actual uh, victory chest the game will take into account how many teams each clan defeated in each building and if these numbers are the same, how many turns it took. So basically, taking it on how many turns it takes is stupid. Uh, they need to basically make it 
how many times the opponent lost versus my defense. If we manage to destroy all of the opponent's defenses and we have 10 losses and the opponent managed to destroy all of our buildings and they have 20 losses, they lose because they're not as good as the, uh, at defeating the defenses. So they need to do that rather than turns because this, in terms of turns, will literally just help Krakens, okay? So this is a problem. So this is a concept, how they're mentioning it right here, but I just wanted to point that out. They definitely... Uh, need to take a different approach rather than turn count because that's very very dumb you know also there are some technical bugs we plan to address in later updates you receive additional attack scrolls even if the enemy clan had upgraded their fortress but stepped into the battle phase with all of the buildings destroyed so if by any chance you leveled up your stronghold to level two the opponent will automatically receive extra attack, extra retry. Every single member, which means 60 extra attacks, basically. So, if they destroyed my stronghold, I cannot use my stronghold to put the additional four defense teams, okay? So, that means that the opponent should not receive the extra attacks, but they still do it. So, that's a problem as well that they definitely need to fix because uh, it makes no sense, you know? which means they uh, cannot fill more than 60 defense positions and are put at a disadvantage. Exactly. So you definitely need to, uh, to sort that out. Defense slots in destroyed buildings get automatically uh, filled with reserve teams. Then, we keep in mind that the mode might require some further balancing and tweaking, but the possible changes are still in discussion, so we will announce them as soon as the uh, details of their implementations are fleshed out. I'm glad that they actually took notes and they've realized that uh, what uh, I've, I've told them and probably other people as well from day one uh, are issues, okay? And I'm glad uh, that it took two sieges, three sieges for them to really uh, see the data and realize that, yes, these things are issues and we definitely need to, uh, to work on them because uh, they're just not healthy for the, for the game mode, you know? You cannot have... 1,000 attacks and 20 defense teams because it makes no sense. You're going to kill them no matter what, you know? Like, eventually you're going to take them down. So uh, it needs to be a balance in between offense and defense as well. Uh, I feel like uh, even with the retries as well, we might have a, a few too many, especially if they're planning to keep four, uh, four battles, four, uh, four attack tickets. They definitely need to look into it and find a better, uh, a better solution. And I still think they need to reduce a bit the cost for repairing buildings because it is pretty damn horrendous, especially if every single uh, siege you get your buildings destroyed. And now that the matchmaking is starting to get more uh, stable and you're kind of like encountering clans that uh, are of your own level, more or less, they're pretty much going to destroy your buildings because they have so many attacks and you're going to destroy their buildings because you have so many attacks. And it's all an issue with having too many attacks, basically. That's the main thing that they should uh, should work in, uh, work on. And then when you need to repair them, the cost is just mind-blowing. Other bug fixes. So check this out. This is a massive, massive nerf. If there are more than one Feral in a team, their passive stack, unlike similar passives of other champions, and they should not be doing so. So starting from the next major uh, update, they will not do it anymore. So if you guys remember, I've done a video a while ago on uh, the Sand Devil or was the Shogun. One or two seconds farm with multiple Ferals. And right now they're farming the Odin boss with multiple Ferals and Sigfrun. And they're absolutely demolishing the boss in two seconds. That will change, okay? That won't be the case anymore. So uh, they will have to use Battle Khazars and Gurptux to make it work. It's still going to work with, the, uh, with those champions, but it won't be two seconds. It will be six, seven seconds. So it's not like they're uh, killing anything in general. It's just uh, the passives won't be able to stack anymore, which in a way, let's just say if other champions don't do it, it makes sense for uh, them to don't do it uh, either, you know? So apparently there is a bug with the Forge Pass quest, guys. Place an X amount of debuffs on campaign and dungeon bosses. It currently doesn't work with Odin Fathers event dungeon. The fix is planned for the next major update. So uh, you will have to farm a different dungeon to get that uh, mission done. And we have a matchmaking error in Live Arena. There is an error in the opponent search algorithm that shows up after several defeats in a row and prevents finding an opponent. So basically, if you have three losses, you're not going to find an opponent. 
uh, the 60 seconds will expire. Then you search again and you will find an opponent. It's always happening, you know. And everyone's favorite game mode, Clan vs. Clan. The next round of the CVC tournament will feature personal rewards. And by the way, the event dungeon will be included among its objectives. Okay, that is actually awesome because we do need it to have it uh, on the objectives for dungeon divers events and everything else related to it. It should definitely be part of it. But that's pretty much everything for the raid i just guys so if you are paying attention at the cost uh, to repair some of these buildings is actually pretty damn crazy 1500 florins uh to get a magic tower uh to get a defense tower again you will need probably 1000 uh to repair a mana shrine i can't show you because uh, nobody destroyed ours to repair a stronghold uh, you will require quite a bit as well 7500 so that that is very, very costly, guys. So hopefully they will definitely uh, make some changes to this part as well. So far, I'll be honest with you guys, uh, I'm enjoying the Siege as a game mode. I do think that uh, having almost two weeks of preparation is a bit too long. Uh, I get it that they kind of like want to keep it in between uh, CVCs. They don't want to make it too often every one week, which uh, might put a lot of pressure on uh, a lot of players. Uh, but yeah, I, I would personally like it to be a bit more often rather than at every two weeks. But either way, I'm enjoying the game mode. Once they're going to fix the, the main issues that this game mode will, uh, has at the moment, I think uh, we're going to be in for a, for a good one with, uh, with this. You know, it's definitely a pretty, pretty solid one. The clans work together and all the, all the good stuff. But that was all for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And... Keep an eye on my next YouTube video, guys, because you don't want to miss that. Over 1,100 primal shards. That's over $6,000 in summons, guys. And on top of it, we're going to have a cash giveaway on that video. So stay tuned for it. Much love. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.